Today's the day before Memorial Day. You know, when I was in Chicago, Memorial Day weekend had one implication, right? <laughs> I'm never going to wear shoes like that again. Just so you know. But it also has another implication, which is memorializing and acknowledging the members of the military that have died in battle. And this can include a variety of different things. Right now, I'm dealing with a situation where, as I've mentioned before, I'm distressed and troubled. Why am I distressed and troubled? Because I encountered a video of a roundtable discussion of four prominent African-American leaders. That is one of the most inspirational things I've ever witnessed. And I believe it's one of the very important moments in American history. And that specific interview, well, let's just say if I had been the man that was at that round table, even if they wanted to talk about my attitude or the way I presided, it would be one of the proudest things I'd ever done in my professional life. And it would have been something I would have considered to be a very meaningful part of my contribution to my country. And I would have been honored to have been able to be present when those men were talking about what they were and the way they were. One of those men was a military veteran who was a reporter for the United States Army during World War II. And the story of how he ended up becoming involved in the civil rights mo movement is actually absolutely fascinating. It's, it's one of those American stories we don't celebrate enough because we don't know enough about it. A young man, uh, some talent, he's written a couple of articles in a newspaper, military newspaper, meets somebody who's from a production company in Paris. He was out in Paris on a shore leave. A man says, you know, look me up when you get back. I'm looking for somebody. Goes back, the next thing you know, he becomes editor of one of the most important black publications in the history of the United States. And ends up writing, has his own relationship with the community, does things, and uh, if I'm not mistaken, he was based in uh, the Bron uh, Brooklyn. Uh, and becomes an important part of the mu community, contributor to arts and entertainment. But then you hear what he says, at this roundtable discussion with these three other men discussing things realistically. There's no abstraction here. This is soul. This is our soul. This is what we need. This is what our communities and our world need restituted. I can't find any information about him anywhere. There's no books in the library. There's no references to his name in the index in the books in the library I can find. Every once in a while, I try to find information on him on the internet. I may find one, maybe two mentions of him. This man was a giant. This is a huge, immense spirit of our country. Why was he disappeared? Why is he not considered to be one of the formative parts of our history? Does it have to do with the Ukraine? or what is known as the Ukraine these days. I believe there's a literal direct connection. If you look at the human capital background inventories of those who are at least in the public realm these days, acknowledged as the heads of state of the Ukraine going back for the last 150 years, you see some correlations. If you're talking about identifying yourself as a class, including as a class that has a legacy based around a expertise or around an intention and how that intention can create a social viability and how that social viability can create and circulate and perpetuate wealth or well-being in a community, then I ask myself, why is it that so much of my life in the recent years ends up appearing in an abstracted, usually fictitious, or allegedly fictitious, artistic rendering when it is identifiably, demonstrably present in a country that literally, literally has a great, vast wealth, including through controversy, including through tumult and turmoil, including through struggle. These are things some people find to be incredibly valuable, nourishing, enriching, soul. 
I don't speak Ukrainian, but I speak English. And when I read through these early articles, this young African-American man who was a journalist during World War II wrote, and then I see him at this round table with these other three men at one of the most important points in American history. You know, right now, right, I just watched that interview yesterday. I was dumbfounded by how precisely and presciently necessary what they were saying at that time is right now. Why can't I find him? Where did he go? Why doesn't anybody want to distribute the life and work of Alan Morrison? Why am I not allowed to honor that veteran? He didn't die during the war. At least not World War II, right? Presumably he died of a heart attack at a very important time in his life, right? He's a veteran of another war. And I want to know what is wrong with me wanting to honor him. Why would you prevent me from being able to honor a veteran on Memorial Day? Why? I want to know who you are. Who are you that decided it was okay to recapitulate the history of my people and then tell me I couldn't have it? Where's Alan Morrison? Where's Rayford Allen? 